treasurer only provides plus three, but this guy gives me plus nine, so that's six more per month, which means I should get a much better return on my money. Where is he? Where are you? There you are. Hello. Burkard Rosenbaum. You are now my treasurer. Congratulations. So this was 1408. Still 1408. But now it is quite a few months shorter. I believe that cut three or four months off. Hmm, we have a diplomat. England, will you join me? Will you join me? Very unlikely, even with two. 199. If I give you access, if we ask for access, you will give us access. This is kind of silly, but since we just took a prestige hit, we do want to get this prestige up as high as possible. It does affect our trade. The lower trade modifier means that we're losing money that we could be making easily. And not only does getting this trade alliance, trade agreement with England get all of England, but now it also gets all this area of Ireland that conquered. So not only will that benefit us, that will getting, be getting all these provinces trading through our COT, but our prestige will make our total trade better as well. So it's a one-two hit. It's great. Huh. Teutonic Order vassalized Riga. That's why their name stretches across. Usually you won't see that usually like France over here basically everything in here except for Brittany and these parts of England here is a French vassal so they're all covered by France's name I guess you would say hmm still not tons going on still not tons I realize this is kind of a slow gameplay video but since pacifism is the goal early on I'm probably not going to pick up for a while sorry about that it's just gonna just part of the game. All right, will you join now, England? Maybe. That's that's a good sign, guys. Let's give them military access. Excellent. Even though we're maxed out at uh, well, just about 200, uh, and they said very unlikely at 190. If we continue to make agreements with them, that'll still go up, even though the actual relationship modifier hasn't changed. So if we can get pretty much all the agreements we can. We can't get a royal marriage because we are we have elected rulers, so that wouldn't really make sense. But we can do other things like trade rights and military access both ways. And we can do other things as well, like proclaim the guarantee, which is what we're going to do now. we will probably think it's pretty funny. Well, three provinces here guaranteeing the might of England. They're at war with France and Scotland. Scotland is almost always... Allied, yep, they're allied with Burgundy and France. Is England at war with Burgundy? No, Burgundy didn't join. I don't know how that turned out. Anyways, in this area, usually either Burgundy or France will become a dominant power and just steamroll through all of this area. Typically, it's France. I've seen a couple games where Burgundy does control a lot. Usually, they stretch all the way up to here. All the way up to here. Just ignore the Emperor because he's so far away and just completely take over all this area and become a very very powerful force hmm we got a diplomat England join me please is there anything else we can do we can offer them an alliance but they won't join ever because we're just too small let's invite them will you join they are in the league mission accomplished team we are such pros alright we got it which means we get 10 money, 10 prestige, which puts us back to zero. So we're no longer negative. That's great. And extra merchants we don't need. Sweet. Hmm. That's an Ooh, this is very nice. If we can pull this off, which is secure trade rights, which isn't too bad. Uh, I believe we already have three. We have Poland, England, and Sweden. If we get two more, then we get extra merchants, extra prestige, and extra trade for four years. That will be huge. Hugely useful. You can usually get some of these small provinces that are already in your trade league fairly easily, although we might want to pick someone bigger because they'll be more valuable. Maybe even though we can't at this point get Lithuania into our trade league, maybe we can invite them to give us trade rights for something valuable. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Also, 
one thing that's important about Merchant Republics, you can almost always get people who are close to you. For some reason, Munster is just ridiculous. They'll never, they always break away. It's the farther away you get, the harder it is to induce people to join. And the reason for this is that the farther away a COT is from your capital, the more expensive it is to send a merchant. So for us to send a Lubeck, because Lubeck is our capital, it's only two, two point three. If Portugal was to try to send a merchant there, it'd probably be somewhere around the range of six or seven ducats. So pretty much, no matter how high we get our relations with Portugal, they'll probably never join. Whereas Genoa has a much better chance of getting them to join. Uh, also, religion plays a big part. Lithuania might just be ignoring us because they are... Oh, they're Catholic. I thought they were Orthodox. Novgorod is Orthodox. Hmm. Maybe Lithuania just doesn't like me. That's a shame. Right. So, the map mode I'm in now... I've, I haven't explained this, but map modes are an important part of this game. Um, you can use them for a big variety of things. Right now, this is political map mode. You'll be using this probably 90% of the time that you're playing this game because it shows you the borders between countries, clearly. Uh, you also have terrain map mode, which is important, more important during wars. It's also pretty nice looking. You know, you got all your standard terrain over here. It's, it's pretty cool. Also, if you get to unite a big area, you don't have all these nice little lines. It looks nice. It's a little hard here. Uh, you also have religion map mode. Uh, this is important because provinces that you own but are not your state religion will have negative bonuses, uh, debuffs, if you will. They just like they just won't cooperate with you because they're different religions. Uh, Imperial, you already saw. That's all the map, all the provinces that are in the empire. Trade, you've already seen. This is all the regions that will trade through the Hansa and other uh, centers of trade. Diplomatic shoes shows who you're allied with or at war with or other things. Region and culture are similar but not the same. Um, if your culture, actually we're in region now, aren't we? All right, region might be important later on because the Hansa can form Germany, and if you do form Germany, you get cores on pretty much everything in this German. Everything that says German region here, like uh, we get cores on Austria, we get cores on Switzerland, everything in here, pretty much, we'll get cores on, which means we'll be able to take it free of infamy, and it'll also provide more money once we do take it, which is great. Culture shows pretty much what you'd think, and it shows the culture of whatever place you're looking at. So, for example, we're in the Germanic culture group, France is in Cosmopolitan culture group, Castile is in the Castilian group. Aragon is in Catalan, Portugal is Portuguese. You know, pretty much standard stuff. English is English. Um, sphere of influence, not going to worry about that yet. Revolt, everything that's green means that there's a very low revolt risk, which is good. You want revolt risk to be low because it hurts your income as well as, obviously, you can have revolts, which will hurt your income even more. Make you f divert you away from using your soldiers in a more productive way, like against enemies of the state. Colonial, I showed you. This is how far we can colonize. That's going to improve later. Economical, this is a pretty interesting map mode. It shows you how much money each of your territories are going to make. Technology shows you how good your tech levels are. Uh, what else? What else is important? Uh, all these here. Uh, building, recruitment, ship, and missionary. These all show if you have buildings that are being built, or units recruited, or missionaries active in provinces. Alright, enough on that. We need to keep playing. Um, right, secure trade rights. That's what we were doing. Will you join our trade league? Maybe. Will you give me trade rights? That's the question. Likely. We want your iron, Lithuania. Give us your iron, please. Yes. That's four. We need one more. We need one more. And then we'll complete the mission and get tons and tons and tons of money. Alright, as you can see, all of these have been pretty much auto-researched by our ruler and by neighbor bonus. There it is. So even though maybe we haven't, they haven't gotten ahead of us in tech, they still have more invested in these than we do. So they'll give us a little bit of a bonus. It's very, very convenient. 
Hmm. So we need trade tech level seven to be able to recruit conquistadors and explorers. That might take a while, honestly. Okay. Land, we don't need investment in. Thank you. No. Cooperate. Uh, it's even worse. Alright, whatever. <sighs> YouTube. This is the start of a very long and boring let's play, which will eventually morph into something amazing. You're just gonna have to stick with me. We have to do this together, team. All right. Diplomats, almost there. We'll be able to ask. Who do we want to ask for trade rights? Let's look at Chile on that Um, you cannot invite to trade league or ask for trade rights for anyone who's already in a trade league with someone else. So Hungary is already part of the Venetian League. So if we try to click on them, it says we're both already in trade leagues and we can't ask for someone for trade rights in a rival trade league. So if someone gets there first, basically there's nothing you can do and you're just gonna have to wait until maybe they break off like Bohemia here, they were part of the Venetian Trade League, they broke off, so we're going to try and get them in our Trade League. Oh, there we go.